from Conrad Crimson and I came from Southwest Church of Christ from Oregon and please open to your book of your Bible please open to Amos 5 verse 1 through 15 and it says hear this word that I take up over you in meditation O house of Israel Fall and no more to rise in the virgin Israel, forsaken on her land, with none to raise her up. For thus does the Lord God, the city that went out, a thousand shall have hundred left, and that which went out one hundred shall have ten left, to the house of Israel. For thus does the Lord, to the house of Israel, seek me and live. But, but do not seek Bethel, and do not enter into Gigal, or cross over to Kresheba, for Gigal shall surely go into exile, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord, and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour with none to quench it, for Bethel. Or you who turn justice to wormwood and got down questionless to the earth. He who made the bliss and warring turns deep in darkness into the morning and darkness the day to night. Who caused for the waters of the sea and tore to mouth the surface of the earth, the Lord in his name. Who makes destruction crash forth against straw? To that destruction comes up the fortress. They hate him. With who reproves in the gate, and they before him who speaks the truth. They go because you trample on the foot, uh, trample, trample the poor, you exact taxes of grain from him. You have built houses of hewn stone. But you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you should not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions, and how great are your sins. You affect the righteous who take bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silent in such time, for this is an evil time. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you. As you have said, hate evil and love good. Establish justice in the gate. It may be the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the root of Joseph. What is good? What is evil? There's a lot of confusion in our world about these two things. Some people can look at something good and call it evil, or they can look at something evil and call it good. This is not new. People have confused good and evil for a long time. In the time of Amos, Israel was confused about was good and was evil. The rich spent their time taking money from the poor by raising prices and lowering amounts of, of grain. These were stealing. But they considered good business. The courts considered this sensible. They favored the rich, even the priests and the prophets, did not condemn the wealthy oppressors, but the Lord saw all of it and condemned them. In verse 5, verse 12, it says, For I know how mean are your transgressions and how great are your sins. Do you flex the righteous who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate? 
Israel may not have know the difference between right and wrong. Good and evil, but the Lord did instead judgment against them. I have once seen a man to try enter a store from the exit door. It was not open for him. Yet he kept trying. This is what it is like to think of evil as good. And good as evil, we try to force something in where it does not belong. Not only is this foolish, can also be dangerous. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 21 through 22, Jesus said to the rich man, If you be perfect, go and sell what you possess, and give it to the poor, and you have a treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he did wait sorrowful, for he had great possessions. In today's world, there are many rich who take advantage of the poor. How many payday and finished business have you seen? Or acts that give someone to their paycheck one week. Kind of time to catch is you have to pay back everything. You borrow plus lot of interest. Before you get them off your back, some people may be giving up 50% of their paycheck to these companies. That is stealing. Cash is illegal. As long as these companies tell the border how much their interest rate is, they are allowed to do this. When the Lord saw what his people were stealing from each other, in verse 5, verse 5, he says, He said, Seek me and live. But do not seek Bothell, and do not enter into Gigal or cross over to Bishopha. For Gigal shall surely go into exile, and Bothell shall come to nothing. In other words, do not think that your worship in the temple or the local altar is going to save you from the assurance instead find the Lord where he actually is. That's among the poor. Amos goes on to say, Amos 5 verse 15, it says, Hate evil and love good, establish justice in the gates. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the women of Joseph. What that means is that Israel needs to learn to stop doing the bad things. They were doing it, start doing good. That image was showing them. They needed to stop stealing from their fellow men and start helping the poor. Even they did this. They will live and find God. We too need to learn how to seek a Lord and live. Many people still rely on their church and tenants, number of prayers and loud singing to get them into heaven. God says it is not our church preparation that will save us in the end. It is helping others having children in relationship with Him. Where is God today? 
He said, oh, long before, remember how Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of these, you do it for me. So, when we feed the poor, give a drink to the thirsty, and visit criminals in prison, we are doing it for Jesus. In inclusion, now that we have, that we know what is good, what is evil, we will do well to practice the good by helping the poor, being nice to those who, who are mistreated, practicing duty worship and showing the true justice. Can you imagine? What the world would look like if we saw the Lord and live. In order for that to happen, you and I both need to make a decision today to hate what is evil, do what is good.